Hey everyone, it's time for block 17 of our American Quilters Stitch Along. Such a beautiful day here in Wisconsin. Uh-oh, we got a little noise going on over there. So everybody jump on, say hello, and we'll get started in a bit here. As soon as we get rid of the people in the hallway. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. All right, so block 17 already. It's so sad, it's almost over. It's almost over. But some good news, we are at $29,400 for donations. So how awesome is that? Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone. And we don't have much for donations this week, but we did get a 200 donation, $200 donation from Dina Gordon from the Yaffa Gordon Fund. Uh, she did a, her first donation that she gave us was in honor of Vietnam veterans. And the second one is in honor of her father, a World War II veteran. So thank you, Dina, for that awesome contribution. We, we so appreciate that. But aren't you excited about 29,400? Oh, you got some prizes. So that's what you were doing in the hallway, huh? Yes. All right, so we have three prizes for today's block. And do you remember how I said that the hard block was last week, which it, it really wasn't hard. It was just tiny, right? So now I know why I pushed this block to 17, because I think um, it ended up like in number six or seven on my quilt because I swapped them when I was putting them together. You know how that happens, right? But no big deal. But this block has some uh, unusual measurements to it. So I want to get you over cutting three sixteenths. So one of those measurements is one and three sixteenths. So where's one and three sixteenths, right? So four sixteenths is a quarter. So it's in between a quarter and an eighth. So we're just gonna line up our ruler in between, not necessarily on a line because there is no 16th marks on my ruler. So we'll just have to do with that. But so today's block might be easy, but it has some unusual measurements. So do we have any people jumping on? How are we doing, Kaylee? They're all saying hi. Okay. So tell them a little bit about our last, so last week, oh yeah, last week we were in the, in the new video room, right? Yeah. Right, so come on over here and talk a little bit about okay. that while people are still jumping I'm on. i to talk loud on your microphone. You want me like in there? Yeah, come over here, say hi. They want to see you. They don't still want to hear you. There, okay. Talking right at you. Okay. Hey, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why we're back out here is because the room, you had awesome feedback, and we moved in there basically because there was no starting point for us. So we needed to figure out what we needed to add and all that good stuff. So with your feedback and just based on what I saw in there, I know my game plan for making it much better for you. Um, but we're out here because we really want you to have good quality video, especially while we're doing our stitch along. So did I miss anything? No. We're So we have a plan in the works to get in there. I to get rid of the echoes. And, yeah. Because yeah, it does sound like we're in a tin can. It does. Yeah. So we have everything. And Lisa has a nice, like, sitting sewing table coming. So Yeah. It should be here today yeah. or tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. So we have lots of good changes coming your way yep. so but yep. we do appreciate your feedback exactly yes yep. all right so prizes um for this the um demo today is a what is it is this one or two i gotta look this must be urban one honey bun so those are one and a half inches of everything in the line and then we have an all in a row book to give a lot give away and these make if you don't want to make a whole quilt you can these make fabulous table runners and then we have yuletide gatherings book to give away so those are our three prizes for today jessica will be at her desk shortly i just saw her run in so i think we can start so when she gets back carrie will you just remind me to um <clears throat> pick some winners all right 
So not a lot of pieces in this block. And give me a, give me a good half hour after this live to get this on because I have to borrow somebody else's computer because I forgot mine. I forget my head some days if it wasn't attached. But so for this one here, we need eight flying geese units and then just large and small triangles. So these two right here are my flying geese. So this is the triangles and these are the little corner geese. This is the center square. These are the setting triangles and then we need our sashing around the outside. So not a lot of cutting, but this square is one and seven eighths and that's not so bad, right? That you can do. But when we make these flying geese here and I did practice a couple. So this flying geese unit we're going to make it and we're going to cut it down. So you'll be able to see exactly how I did that because it needs to be cut to one and three sixteenths wide this way, tall, I guess is the better way to say it. And then one and seven eighths wide to match up to this guy right here like that. All right. So a little different measurements, but we can do it. No problem. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is make the flying geese units. So I have those here. So we need eight of them. So this might take a little bit, but please ask some questions and let's have a little chat here while I'm sewing. My machine sounds nice and quiet today. I wonder what's up. They're saying that your voice is muffled, so. I am muffled? Yeah. Hmm. Badly? Um, or am I just not talking good? I think it's not good. Okay. So did you test the mic, Kaylee, or not? Yeah, I did. Yeah? All right. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the blue triangles and I'm just um, I'm just laying this cream triangle exactly like that and make sure that it's not hanging over on the back side and we'll have that perfect quarter inch there on top. So we're going to have four cameras, right? Eventually. Yeah. The sound's fine now? All right. Maybe I was mumbling. <laughs> I'm not a professional broadcaster. I'm a professional quilter. So yesterday, Nick and I got on our motorcycles and we drove two hours to Wisconsin Dells had lunch, walked the strip, and pretty much came home. So we were home by like five. But it was a beautiful day. It's like almost 80 here this week. It's unseasonably warm, which is awesome. Because I was so mourning the loss of summer. I don't like it when, even though I love fall, I love summer too, so. I actually like all the seasons, but summer's the one I miss the most when it's when it's over with. All right, so just like that, I have all eight of them sewing. So I will use my scissors here. Don't know where my little thingy went. <laughs> all right, put that in there. All right, over to the iron. One got away. I'm just going to press these away or back, however you want to state that. Just starting to, just starting to. And we went south. We didn't go north. I think the more north we go, like maybe next week, since it's going to be beautiful next week too, in the 70s, 
we're probably going to take a ride up and see some of that fall color. So I love it when the weather doesn't turn nasty and then we don't have any really nice fall at all. It goes almost right into winter. Okay, so here's the one side. I'm not going to cut off anything yet. I, right here. I always like to leave those dog ears on until I know it's good. So I position it exactly like that. And I'm going to sew right from this corner to that corner of the quarter of an inch. All right, Jessica's back. So Jessica, who's our first winner of our honey bun? Brenda Holt. Brenda Holt? Yep. All right, Brenda, please email us your address. Carrie, can you tell them what the email address is? It is store at primitivegatherings.us. I can't remember everything. <laughs> I don't want to screw it up. So remember, these are oversized, and we are going to trim them down to match. And because this block is like on point, that's why we have to do that. But we can do it. I'll be there to hold your hand. You can watch this video over and over again to see how I do that. We have an unrelated question. Okay, perfect. She wants to know if you can wash primitive wool projects once they're completed. Like wool projects. Can you wash it? Once oh, wash. I said. I thought you said watch. I'm like, ah. what do you mean, watch them? Yeah, you can watch them. <laughs> um, you can wash wool. The issue is, is that you can't get it hot and wet. You can get it cold and wet. But I would suggest other things. Like if you have a wool mat, I would lint roll them or spot clean them. Like if the kids get peanut butter on them, that, that never happened at my house at all. all right. So yeah, so sometimes that happens. But like if you just have a quilt that has wool applique on that's hanging and it just needs a refresh, throw them in the dryer with some dryer balls and let the, let the um, air in the dryer suck all the dust and whatnot out of them. But yes, the, your, my answer is they can be washed, but just make sure it's super cold water and then you won't have any bleeding. And then when it's, when you, if you, if you submerse it, then pull it out and like roll it in a towel to get all that moisture out of it and then just dry it flat. And you can steam it as well and then just leave it dry naturally. But, I've also had sweatshirts with wool appliques on them and Nick has thrown them right in the washer, right in the dryer, and they come out just fine because that wool has already been pre-shrunk in the dyeing process. But very rarely do I wash my wool applique quilts or my wool projects. Good question though. Dookie. <laughs> um, you mean like which one of mine do I like or just the brand? Yeah, I... You'll have to rephrase that question so they hear it. Right. So it was... Yeah, she, you can't hear her. But she, the question was, what is my favorite machine to piece with? And it is the Juki. I mean, these simple models here that only so straight are my favorite because of the speed and the accuracy and the feed dogs being nice and close together for these little pieces. They're not, they don't have those wide feed dogs and they have a single hole throat plate. And it's just a basic machine with needle down and the um, knee lift here. So it's everything a quilter needs for piecing. But my son is working with me on those new Berninas that are fabulous with the what do they call them? Double, double bobbins? Like they, the bobbin holds twice as much as normal. I mean, if you hate winding bobbins, that might be the way to go. So now I have to press all eight of these out. So 
also um, talking about the juki, we do have some of the platinum jukis on that I sewed on last week that was in my in our new studio over there. We do have we did call Juki to see if we could find any more of them. And they told us exactly how many are left. So if anybody wants that platinum Juki, I believe Jessica has put them back on the website. Yep, yep. And then um, do you want to talk a little bit about our uh, plans for another stitch along after this one? Or what did we really come up with? Do you remember? Oh. Okay, so I know you can't hear Jessica, so I apologize for that because she's way over there. But do you, those of you who know me forever, we always do that 12 days of Christmas event. So we might do a, uh, something 12 days stitch along to go with the products and the steps that we will go through for, for, that, for a project. So we're trying to like mix it up a little bit because you know, after so many years of doing needful things that quilters can't live without, I think we need to mix it up. And part of it is going to be a stitch along. So kind of uh, look for that and we will get the more information on that. Yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of pfft, emojis going all over the place. All right. So Kaylee, is this camera good here? Yes. All right. So what I want to do now is kind of different from how I used to do this. Any lower, this is good. Can I go higher? Okay. Picky, picky, picky. All right, this is good? So here's all eight of my units. Now I need to do one and three sixteenths wide. So I'm going to just clean up the dog ears on this side right here. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to, I want you to be able to see if you can really see this good or not. So one and three sixteenths. So here's one and a quarter. I'm just going to back up my ruler in between the eighth and the quarter. So I'm running this edge right in the middle of the eighth and the quarter. So that is three sixteenths and I'm going to trim this off. So then I'm going to turn it and now this isn't very, uh, very, uh, what's the right word? Um, exact. So we're going to fudge a little bit here. So what's half a one and seven eighths, right? Like, what is it? What is that? It's probably like 15 sixteenths, right? So that's close to an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the inch, but I'm going to go move it right between the inch and the seven eighths mark. And then I'm gonna trim one side. And if you look at that, it's right at the point. So that's perfect. Now we're gonna turn it. And then I'm gonna line this side up on seven eighths. And that will give me one and seven eighths. So that's exactly how we're gonna trim all eight of them. And if you get it where it's a little bit thicker there than an exact point, it's okay. It really is because we are just trying to um, get the close enough to one and seven eighths and three sixteenths. It's a weird measurement, I know, but you can do it. So let me just do all these now. I'm going to trim off all those dog ears so I have a nice straight line to cut my one and three sixteenths. Any other questions? We can pick a winner. Janice Conkey. Ooh, Janice. I think she was just here for our open house, or our grand opening. What did you win? You won, I think she might have the Yuletide Gatherings book, so you won the in a row again janice thank you all right so now i'm going to turn them all all the dog ears are off and i'll just talk through this while i do it so you can understand and not be afraid okay so again find the one and a quarter 
and then back it up so I'm in the middle of the one and a quarter and one and an eighth. Trim that away. So I'm going to do that on all of them now. Are any of you nervous about one and three sixteenths? Say not anymore. Yes, yes, you can do it. I need Rosie the Riveter giving them the big old arm. All right, so now I have the width or the length or the height. Now I need to do, okay, so now on this one, I'm going to line up the point and the edge on one inch, but then I'm going to slide it in the middle. And like I said, it's right at that point there. So I'm going to do all the one sides first. Oh, I did that one already. Okay. I'm like, oh, that one is good. They're all right? I know. I don't want anybody afraid. What is nice, though, it, it is when you get it in the in between, you can see that it's right there at that point. So. All right, one side all done. We're going to flip around to the other side. And this side is the easiest because we can just use the one and seven eighths. All right, so now one and seven eighths. Line everything else up. Trim. One and seven eighths. And it's really nice if you try to do this with a little ruler instead of trying to like wing around these bigger rulers. So make sure you have a nice little ruler to do these little shapes. Is there a calendar up and running for the I don't know. And when the web guy is out of town, nothing happens. <laughs> All right, so now I can flip over and do what it says here. So geese going down, going down. What is? What are you doing back there? Oh, okay. Do you want to do it right now? Okay. All right, so for Hawks of Venus, we had talked about doing an auction. All right, I'll get on this side. Yeah, there you go. All right, I got to talk to, this is lovely. I get to talk to your chest. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to do an auction for the Hawks for Heroes, and we have some uh, great things to auction off. It's going to happen next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we're going to start right at 7 and the auction will pretty much will put up the the object and have everybody bid on it and whomever is the last person to to bid will be the winner of it what we do need is everybody to pre-register so please reach out to the shop to send an email to store at primitivegatherings.com we need your phone number and your name judy will call you back and take your information so that when you make the purchase we can go ahead and run your credit card that day and the way it works it's going to be the auction whatever you Whatever the highest bidder is, it's the auction plus shipping. So when you get done with the block, we can show them a couple of the items here this week. And, you know, that we've got, it'll be on next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you cut me two, two and an eighth? I forgot that one. Two, two and an eighth. Okay. 
of this right right there i left it there just in case i forgot yep okay so i'm gonna sew these two flying geese units together Where? yeah cut me four because i have two blocks to do because remember i'm making extra quilts So I'm just laying these right sides together. They match perfectly. You don't need to pin here, but you can see lopped one off there a little bit, but <laughs> as I'm watching, I'm like, oh, I just hit that. <laughs> It'll be fine. All four together. Now I'm gonna press this seam open. Let's see what I did on this one. Yep, I pressed them open here as well. So those are all open there. I made that block, not last night. I made that block a long time ago, probably just to test the directions again. But when I opened up my um, binder, it was in there already made. I'm like, yay. My fingers aren't working here, so we're just gonna finger press these open quick. A little finger press closer to me instead of trying to do it on the ironing board. So I'm super excited about all the stuff we're planning. Our um, All Things Pumpkin is full right now, right? Yes. But we are taking reservations yeah, or waiting a waiting time. list and we're even thinking of maybe doing a virtual one so those of you who will never be able to come here for whatever reasons you might be able to do some things virtual and we're looking into that it's not as fun but it's better than not being able to do anything at all where we we would send you all your stuff ahead of time and you'd be all ready to go when we were ready to go. So, okay, so let's see, get this in the right spot. Pointing down. This is gonna, I think these are all oversized too as well. I think we'll be trimming around the perimeter of the block. And then this, these two go to the center block. going to finger press that open put the other one on now make sure Sure. So Jessica just started a new Facebook page for our gathering place. So um, is it is it a um, anybody can join? Yes. All right. So if you want to know the happenings of what's going on at the gathering, this is going to be another place where we can post. Um, like when my antique quilts go home, I can at least have like an ongoing. Um, uh, log of who's who gets to take my children home and just some of the things that they're doing at the gathering it'll give them a, a page to post 
what's going on. So we think it'll be another fun addition to all of our other Facebook groups, but just what we need, another Facebook group, but. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, it's not like a group, it's a page. So in what is the exact name of it, Jessica? The gathering at Primitive Gatherings. So it's the Facebook page is called The Gathering at Primitive Gatherings. And then you just like that. And anytime somebody posts to it, you get it in your feed. So you can see the ladies and gentlemen having a good time. And it will be most fun. All right. So these I'm going to press away. So this one I'm going to press two. So these are going to go this way. And this, these two are going to go out. So that's what I'm doing with these. Can you cut those in half, Carrie, on once on the diagonal, please? Sorry. All right, so here we go. Look at how nice this is coming together, just like that. So now I need to add those last two and one eighth inch squares cut in half on the diagonal. So I think we can, um, you can, if you want to just put them on now, you can, or you could sew this. Actually, I'm going to put these on first and then, so these are what these are. So one, two. So she get those other two here, but all I'm going to do now is put this in the center like that. Line that up. There. Stitch these two on. And this one, the same thing. Lay these two like that. You have that point matching that point. And this doesn't have to be a quarter of an inch because remember, this is big. I'm going to trim it down. Mm -hmm. All right, we have, do we have any more prizes left? Did we give them all away? The oh, the book. Okay. Jessica, who is up next for a prize? Jennifer Matheson. You won the Yuletide Gatherings book. Congratulations. One more. Okay. It wouldn't be very pretty. That guy literally like, oh my God, I got to put makeup on today. <laughs> so these poor girls put up with me with no makeup on most of the time. I was, I was talking to the ladies at the retreat house last night and I'm like, so the first time in my life, I actually like emptied the whole thing of, um, I eyeshadow like the first time in my whole life that I've ever emptied something. Yeah. But then of course the other three next to it are all full because I only like the one. Okay. Here's my three units. This is going to go here and this one here, we will have to pin that seam right there. Make sure you give it a little, Flip up to make sure they line and nest up nicely. Am I in the right spot? This way? All right. So I'm just peeking that back to make sure those are nesting nicely. And I don't know if you do this or not, but I pin into my seam instead of on the outside of it like that. So I don't have to take these pins out when I stitch. Like, what's in the green jar? What's the green jar? 
Yep. Can you see it? These are these are all my cutoffs of my dog ears when making half square triangles. And I have several of these jars. They're quilt seeds. That's their proper name. <laughs> okay, check my intersections. Good, good. Put the next one on before I press it. I don't go to the iron every time after every step. I'll do, if I can do two steps at a time, I do two steps at a time and then go to the iron once. That's all kind of being efficient. It's very important. Gives you more time to make more quilts. Remove the pins, open it up, check it out. Looks amazing. Now I'm going to press these two seams open on the pressing stick. So how many of you stopped cutting off your dog ears automatically the first thing when it when you make that unit? How many of you are leaving them on a little longer and then trimming them off? All right. Whew. It worked. <laughs> oh, I knew it was going to be okay. All right. So now we need to trim to four and a half. Did we put that on here? Yep. Right there. Okay. So half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line up two and a quarter right on these two points here. So two and a quarter two and a quarter, and then make sure I don't twist it like I just did. All those little seams and press open, that kind of gives you a little bit of a, um, you have to really hold your ruler down nice and tight so it doesn't move, even though we have those grips. And before I cut, I do kind of just glance to make sure that I'm not going to lop off a point at all. What's that? Are we taking a time out? Oh, okay. So now I'm going to do the two and a quarter again. Kaylee's changing batteries, I think, in her other camera. So I'm going to line up one of these straight here on an already cut. Two and a quarter, two and a quarter. There you go. Check my points. Yep, that looks good. Hold it down nice and tight. Now I can just do four and a half on this side. Check my points. Looks good. There we go. They all seem to be cutting them off. They're like, I cut mine off. I yeah, cut them. Yep. you cut them off, huh? A couple people said they stopped Yeah, well, just, you know, think about it. So these are going to go on the side and top and bottom. Machine sounds so nice. It's got a nice hum to it. So I just press those away, and now my last two little sashings. Mm 
Can you grab me a can of our starch? I see you've been starching fabric. Oh, it's pink. Right, so we should talk about that a little bit. Bring me over a couple of your pieces you've been working on. All right, so here's our little block. All my points are intact. Everything looks amazing. So no problem, you'll be able to do this. I'm gonna grab my stripes here. Make sure I like this. Yep, yeah, I like that. Or do we want it this way? No, we can't do it that way. Gotta go this way or that way. Nope, we're gonna go this way. So I'm gonna trim off that side and it almost looks like it is trim, but we'll give it one more trim. So I'm just line up one of my stripes here, clean off an edge. These are gonna go together. I like to put the, the long one on the top. that one over. Now this one's going to go on. I'm going to be trimming this one. Center seam open. There's our block. Now all I have left to do is trim up the edges. I'm gonna move this out of the way. A 12 inch ruler here. 12 inch ruler. Set it right in the middle there. This side is already set, so I'm just going to line that up, trim, and then trim. Block 17, kind of a easy star, but not easy measurements, but I have faith that you will be able to do that. So um, a little bit about starching. I know we have a lot of new people every week. So let's just talk a little bit about starching fabric. So this is what I use right here. And um, yes, there's all kinds of other ways to starch. This right here is what I find is most economical and gives me the best results. And that is nice, kind of stiff fabric to work with. So Jessica here is starching fabric for our quilt pink quilt that we are gonna be starting soon. And um, what she's done with this is this is part of the kit. So she's taken her kit, she's saturated like super wet, like one on top of the other, and then hang them to dry on a drying rack. And she lets that overnight or you know enough time to pass that they are completely dry. And then she will put this on the ironing board and then press them for cutting. And then they are ready to cut. And they will stitch through your machine like almost like little cardboard chips. And it really does help with the accuracy of piecing just by having them a little stiff instead of so flimsy and you know real malleable. The, that little stiffness really helps with your piecing. So um, if you want to uh, stitch along with Sherry McConnell's Stitch Pink this year, we are having our own kit put together. Um, it is a collaboration of different designer fabrics and we will be um, putting that out there. When is that gonna go out, Jess? 
It's already on our website. So is it under Stitch Pink? Yeah. All right. So you would have to buy the pattern uh, either from um, Primitive Gatherings or from Sherry. And then on October 15th is when it starts. Now, do you know more about it? Is it like a weekly? Is it? So six weeks total, and I think each week has different sets of blocks. So it's not just one block. Like you'll be making like six heart blocks and six or different heart configuration blocks. So um, you don't happen to have the pattern quick, do you? So Jessica's going to grab that pattern, and we will just show you that too. So that's another thing coming up. And we have a secret about who's going to get our quilts. We are actually together as a group going to make this stitch pink quilt for one deserving person. So this is the pattern from Sherry. And um, we have pulled the fabrics. It's up on our website already. Hey, this worked out perfect. Like we didn't even, you know, now we, a, a double shot of talking about this, but um, you'll be able to get the pattern and our fabrics. We, I think we have a lot more red in ours versus pink. So ours is a little bit more red and that was just a sample of the um, yardage. She has she has more of them over there uh, on the drying rack, drying at the background and stuff like that. So go on our website if you're interested in that and check that out. And we will get that shipped out to you. And so you can be stitching on the 15th. So we have two weeks to get that out to you. And we could be able to get that out no problem because they are already cut. So going back to the starching, mm -hmm. can you starch uh, your flannel? Yes. So great question. I starch flannel and I starch cotton, regular cotton. But here's the deal. This is this is what you starch and what you don't starch. So anything that you are gonna piece, anything that you're gonna piece together into triangles or or flying geese, that stuff gets starched. But if you have an applique background, I don't starch those. Or if your appliques I don't starch that. So it's mainly for accuracy in piecing. So whether it's flannel or homespun or regular cotton, I starch all of those if it's for piecing. If it's for like, grab me one of those blocks. So if it's for like this flannel for our um, summer block of the week here, this is not starch. This is really flimsy. And even though I'm going to sew these together, that's not going, it's, I don't need to because it's just a whole block and I can sew a whole 10 inch block to another 10 inch block without any, any problems. It's just when we piece, we want them to be a little bit more accurate and having that starch in there really, really does help. Now it's not for everyone. You don't have to do it. If you've been, you've been making little tiny quilts like this for 20 years and you don't need to starch, hey, good for you because it's one less step, but I find it very helpful and those of you who have done starching now and maybe didn't in the past, maybe come on and make a comment like, yeah, I do it now and it is a deal breaker or, oh, it's okay. I don't really need to do it. But it, again, it's a personal thing. You don't have to do it. It's just what I find very helpful. And most of the people that I do talk to really like the addition of starching your fabrics before we cut and stitch them. And yes, pre-cuts are yeah, so pre-cuts as well, because um, you might not know this, but when you have a jelly roll or a honey bun, when, you know, because all fabric shrinks, right? When you either get it wet or you wash it. So when you're starching it and it'll shrink a little bit while it's drying and while you're starching it, but it doesn't shrink width-wise. That will still remain intact, your one and a half or your two and a half. It'll shrink lengthwise a little bit. That's where it's going to shrink up. So you're still able to use those widths in the pre-cuts if you so need them to be. So no shrink is that way. It won't be two and three eighths after you're done. It will still be two and a half. Great question. All right. Is that it for today? Do we have anything else, girls? All right. So just, just to give you a, a little preview of an auction item. Carrie, hold that up. So this is one of the auction items that we are auctioning off. Carrie and I bought this at um, the Harley Davidson shop in Fond du Lac. Somebody handmade them. So this will be one of our auction items. So maybe you have a motorcycle enthusiast in your family that might need this as a present. 
or maybe you want it for yourself. I want it for myself. <laughs> All right. So, and we will do things like that barn quilts we have. We'll do some other quilts and it might not all be patriotic stuff. It might be just things I need to see, get a good home. So tune in and find out, but make sure you're registered just in case there's something that you just have to have. All right. So again, thanks for another great week of posting your blocks. I love the excitement with those little itty bitty blocks from last week. You did an awesome job. Keep it up and we can't wait to keep hearing from you. So give me a half hour and I'll get the block up. Take care now.